Folktalk.in helps you translate your videos in a multiple language instantly using AI. They align video with the audio, including pauses. They've got 11 on their beta list so far. They got this through cold emails. There's four co-founders. Armand's got the most equity. And they also set up an ESOP pool right at the start to motivate folks like the one engineer that's doing some work for them right now, hoping to go to market and launch their first price plan later this year. They're bootstrapped so far. You can check them out at Folktalk.in. Hey folks, my guest today is Armand Puri. He's an AI researcher and entrepreneur with experience at top research labs in India and Singapore. He's created an innovative vernacular of AI products resulting in multiple patents and research papers with demonstrated market success. Today, he's working on automated dubbing for creators at folktalk.in. Armand, are you ready to take us to the top? Definitely. All right. Good to be here. Talk to me about how a creator, a customer who's paying you, that's a creator and how they use you. Uh, right. So currently, the way a customer would use us is simply by providing their product link or their video link, I should say, and the target language that they want us to uh, convert the video in. So, and also we ask the the creator to specify the kind of features that they want us to include uh, in the uh, converted video. So our offering includes things like. Uh, Lip synchronization, which is also our uh, USP, that we offer high quality lip synchronization without uh, sacrificing on video quality, which has been a serious concern for creators. And also voice matching, where we try to match the cadence, the speech style, uh, the pauses that a particular creator would take in their original language and convert it into the target language. So these are some of the inputs that we require. So just to be clear, if corporate McDonald's records a new message they want to send out to all of their worldwide employees, they could take that one 30 second video and in, um, in, um, you know, English, right. The American language in English, put it in your system and you're going to create the, take the exact same video, but the mouth is going to be AI and it's going to speak in sort of Indian or Chinese or Russian, whatever the language is that you need to convert it to. Yes, precisely that. So, uh, let's say if the target language is Hindi, then they would, uh, the lips would move in a manner that the actual speaker or the original speaker is speaking the language. And we would also ensure that the voice timbre uh, and the uh, the pauses that are required, those are at the right moment. So the audio also matches with the video. So yes, that's exactly right. It would We would try to make it look seamless. That's great. What do customers pay you on average per month for this? So uh, right now we are in our beta stage. We have unpaid customers who are uh, using our product and testing it and uh, getting ready to kind of uh, use it commercially. But on average, a content creator would pay us about $150 a month. And uh, it's different for enterprises, as you mentioned, McDonald's. So if McDonald's were to use it for their internal or even for their ad campaigns, then our pricing would be somewhere around $1,000 for uh, enterprises, for ed tech and, and so forth. But just to be clear, you're guessing you don't have paying customers yet. No, we don't have paying What's customers What's taking yet. so long? What, what, when can you launch pricing? Uh, right. So what's taking so long, I would say, is uh, the fit between the expectation that we have from our uh, uh, from the content creators. So we have been able to match the expectations on the video end. So as you mentioned, the lip synchronization and the visual aspect of the video is something uh, that we specialize in. We are trying to expand our range on languages. So we have, uh, for example, Hindi creators who are ready to use our product for English and for Spanish. Uh, so they're ready to use it in those languages. Uh, but for Indian regional languages, which are in AI terms, there would be low resource languages. They don't have as much data available. Those are the challenging languages for us, but we do have solutions and we are uh, acquiring customers or unpaid customers right now who are expressing interest in converting to Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. 
Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your founder path dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, one point two million seed round, three point seven raise. They sold twenty two percent of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. So how many are on the beta list right now? How many have signed up but are not paying? Uh, right, so right now we have 11 uh, customers that are on our uh, beta list are not paying. So out of that, one is uh, a pretty big ed tech company. So inside the ed tech company, they have a multiple educators and instructors uh, so if we're not taking into account them uh, we're not accounting for them as separate from the edtech platform so that's just one customer that we're counting them as and the others are all content creators ranging from uh, about a million subscribers to a few hundred Armand, how did you find the first these first 11 beta users right so uh, that's interesting because uh, our journey has been has relied a lot on network. So uh, I am connected directly to a lot of people in the uh, content creator space. One of my co-founders also is directly in touch with uh, educators and content creators. So about 50% of them we have acquired through uh, simply emails, cold emails and pitching our product. What does the subject line of the cold email say? Uh, the subject line of our code email reads, um, so we have experimented with different things, but what seems to uh, work best is uh, acquire new audiences and increase audience by 40%, something along. I'm paraphrasing, of course, I don't have it uh, by heart, but something along those lines where we, instead of uh, talking about ourselves, we try to talk about the uh, customer or the- Understood. Content. And are any of these beta users, have they said, you know, have they signed and said, let us use it for free and then we'll start paying a thousand dollars a month or have they, no one's committed to any future revenue yet either. Right. So, uh, that's what we're working on right now. So to answer it, uh, directly, no one has committed at this moment, but we have verbal confirmation from, uh, about three content creators and the big ed tech platform. So that's one of our, uh, big wins at the moment that we have the ed tech platform on board we are That's kind of great. creating the uh, and you keep saying we do you have one other co-founder i actually have three other co-founders so three uh yes so there's four there's four of you total four of us did you guys total. just play nice and split equity 25 each uh so it's a almost it's almost like that so i originally uh started working on the product so just to avoid a situation where we are split two and two and we are stuck on a decision uh, there is about two percent extra uh with me at the moment so that we can proceed and not uh, create a dead so you own 27 percent anyway. and the three of them own like 23 24 percent right right i see That's very cool and have you guys bootstrapped to date or have you raised capital no we are com we're completely bootstrapped and uh, our plan is to acquire uh at least 10 customers 
and then think of uh, raising capital. When so did you launch the company? When did you start working on this? So uh, I started working on the AI algorithm part uh, while I was at my previous uh, job. So even there, I was working for a conversational AI vernacular company where I sort of uh, thought Armand, of what, what year was this? Right, this was last year. This was uh, okay. 2022 July. So that's when I started uh, working on the product development. I went through a few rounds of iteration of development. I got feedback from friends and family, and uh, I had a decent working product by October. And then in November, I uh, gathered my other co-founders, and I, uh, because of course, I, what I realized was I was. Uh, decently good at writing code and uh, creating uh, like the base for the product uh, and also strategizing how we can take this forward but for marketing for sales and for those things uh, i thought it would be best to expand the team and uh, get it started as quickly as possible so mm -hmm. in november we formed the team and in january we started uh, speaking with customers interesting and what are you doing right now to try and get a sense of what they're willing to pay. If, if you're doing customer calls, how are you structuring those calls? What questions are you asking? What are you watching and measuring in the product UI? Right. So what we are specifically asking customers is uh, three things, essentially. So we want to identify whether the pain point for a customer is the uh, translation, which would be, uh, let's say the original video is in English and we're converting to Spanish. Then are we using some... Uh, very typical Spanish words, which are normally a person would not use in their daily usage, which is which often happens with AI translation systems. Uh, so we try to identify pain points in text or in audio. If the audio sounds unnatural or it sounds robotic or it doesn't match with the original speaker's uh, speaking style, or mm -hmm. is the problem with the video? So we have sort of broken down the uh, potential uh, pain points into these three elements of text, video, and audio. And that's Understood. what we try to figure out. Very good. And it's, it's just four of you today, or is there other folks on the team? Uh, so there's four of us, and there is uh, another uh, tech person who's helping us with the uh, the whole dashboard that we want How to How are you present. getting them to work for you? Do you give them equity? Or are you paying them? Uh, right. So the fifth person would uh, get equity from the uh, ESOP pool. And of course, the co-founders are working. Uh, is there an ESOP pool set up today? Uh, yes, we already have the split. Uh, so that's what we're basing the fifth. How person's... big did you set up that ESOP pool at the start? So the, to start with, we've set up about 10 to 15% is what the ESOP pool size is at the moment. And from that, we are uh, planning to. Okay, so part. you don't own 27%. So you own something more like 20%. And then your three co founders own like 18, 19. And then the ESOP is 15%. That's how we get to 100. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So from the 19, 90%, we uh, split that way so as to avoid the deadlock problem. That makes a lot of sense. Well, we're certainly rooting for you. You're off to a good start. In the meantime, though, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book would be Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. Would recommend it to anyone I can. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, not one in particular, but uh, I am following. Uh, I mean, I try to gather things from a lot of CEOs, but not one in particular. I can't pinpoint. Number that. three, what's your favorite online tool for building folk talk? Online tool. Uh, that would be Hugging Face. Uh, that's... Uh, quite a boon for anybody who's an AI and who's trying to build an AI program. What's it called? Hugging face. H-U-G-G? -G. Yes, hugging face. Got it. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, six to seven, I would say on average. And what's your, seven. what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Uh, uh, if there's a fourth option, I'd take that. Not, not single, but not married. Got it. Fair enough. Uh, so no kids right now? No, no, and how and how old are you, Armand? I'm 25. 25. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, something I wish I knew. Well, there are a lot of things I wish I knew when I was 20. Uh, one that I can think of right now is uh, consistent 80% is better than an inconsistent 100%. That's probably 
one thing I would like to do. That's a good one, guys. Folktalk.in helps you translate your videos in a multiple language instantly using AI. They align video with the audio, including pauses. They've got 11 on their beta list so far. They got this through cold emails. There's four co-founders. Armand's got the most equity. And they also set up an ESOP pool right to start to motivate folks like the one engineer that's doing some work for them right now, hoping to go to market and launch their first price plan later this year. They're bootstrapped so far. You can check them out at folktalk.in. Armand, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks for having me. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at NathanLacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.